and we're now playing Manhattan Community Board for Executive Committee. Welcome everyone, sorry for the delay. We blame Paul Devlin and his, for not being able to run his nominating committee properly. Um, you voted already, right, Paul? Um, the first item on the agenda is the report from the Budget Task Force. So I will turn this over to the chair of the Budget Task Force, our once and future second vice chair, Jessica Che. Thank you, Lowell. Um, so many of you participate in the budget uh, task force. Just to recap for everybody, we, um, over the last two sets of meetings, not quite two months, but almost two months, um, task committees have had the opportunity to review past budgets, um, make new requests, and Jesse and the office had prepared um, a very helpful sheet for re-ranking past priorities, adding in additional priorities, um, that are just new, and then also adding and identifying priorities which were specific um, to COVID. Um, again, these are budget priorities that will impact next budget cycle, so July 1, this is FY22. Um, and as a parallel process, we also did a survey, uh, which we'll share the results with you shortly, um, but we had over 300 or just, just about 300 participants from across the community um, and I think their feedback combined with um, really the, the, the narrative that we heard from the committees, um, as well as the budget task force itself, really look to emphasize the issues of um, homelessness and housing, education, um, and sanitation. And so when, you, when we go through, um, if, if we'd like to go through now or we can just take your feedback, um, the budget task force met last week to begin the process of um, prioritizing both on the expense and capital side um, as, as is typical and as has been done in past years, not so easy. Um, there's a fully a recognition that I think we're all aware of that the city is gonna have a lot less money going forward um, and that um, you know really basic essential services need to be uh, insured and sustained. Um, but even still, those are, you know, those are big, important asks um, in a budget that is, is undoubtedly going to be very tight. Um, so we do have, um, Jesse, I don't know if you want to share or they're in the Dropbox, uh, but we do have updated capital priorities and expense priorities. We also have a document, uh, which is the uh, Statement of District Needs, which we're still waiting on some updates too. So all of this remains more or less in draft form, but does reflect the direction we are going, uh, which is to prioritize the three areas I mentioned, homelessness and housing, uh, education and sanitation. Jesse, anything you'd care to add to that? No, I mean, I think, uh, and, and you know, what we sort of asked each committee to do is to review the existing requests from last year, you know, streamline them for anything that's already been funded or has some somewhat funding and then uh you know include any kind of covid specific or you know new requests and and i think in general we found that committees you know as you guys will know committees really kind of made the covid requests or the the requests related to the impact that covid has had as their primary uh, as their you know top priorities and let the uh, last year's requests sort of shift down a little bit, you know, in some cases. And so um, I sent I sent the uh, capital and the expense uh, requests to you guys this morning or maybe early this afternoon. Um, I apologize for the lateness of it. Um, I, I can put them up on the screen if that's helpful. We can we can look at them all if that's what we want to do. Or if there's people that have questions about them and have had a chance to review them. Um, you know, uh, we can go that way. So I, whichever way. I will just just also add that um, we did go through again this morning with a fine tooth comb to try to catch typos and phrasing and periods and things like that. I will do that again after this meeting. Um, if you have any edits that you're catching uh, both in the two budget documents or the statement of district needs, please feel free to send them to me. Um, but I think what we're really looking for uh, in terms of your approval today is really the direction of these documents, uh, knowing that they will be tweaked and fine-tuned uh, on the margins between now and the board next week. Paul has his hand up, Jessica. Oh, I'm sorry, Paul. 
No, that's all right. I, 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 on sort of the conversation about the priorities, um, I, I was reading through the expense and capital uh, spreadsheets today and was kind of surprised that there were so many sanitation issues so high up on our priorities, but because um, it didn't, I hadn't heard a whole lot about that in the past. And so I'm glad to hear it came out of the survey that was done in the community and that's more of a community component that's pressing us there. Um, but I am questioning why some of those things did move higher up than some of our more, what I consider more pressing in housing and education issues. Um, notably, uh, ba basket collection is a higher priority than the elevators at NYCHA. And I just think that that might be a misrepresentation of our overall sense of priorities as a community. Sure, I think, I think one of the things that's kind of happening and um, as I just shared in the last meeting, I'm still also new to this, but is this prioritization, you know, recognizing that each ask ultimately gets to, uh, you know, what goes to NYCHA isn't necessarily seen uh, or the department, you know, HPD isn't necessarily seen by sanitation. And so there is an effort to kind of move things and show a variety of issues at the top, uh, recognizing that ultimately each uh, department, New York City department gets the priorities that are, are related to their work and their work only. I think there's also an element of things that are, what are uh, priorities to be budget items that are reinstated versus new money and doing something new. And so there was a, a, a regular kind of reference to like, what do we think is actually possible or what is a longer term ask that is something we have been advocating for for a long time. Whereas I think a lot of the sanitation cuts are very specific to, again, not COVID in the sense that COVID didn't cause sanitation to not be picked up, but rather the budget related to some of the challenges our city's experiencing because of COVID um, have impacted the amount of sanitation pickup and cleanup. But there are others um, with many budget task force committee members here who have committees who have heard issues on this and written letters on this. Is there anyone else who would wanna speak to why sanitation is, is so high up on the list repeatedly? Well, I, well, no, I, ahead, I, I would say that we have heard, and I think we all agree that with the, um, you know, the empty storefront and uh, we don't want the district to look derelict and we wanted to uh, really improve the environment and the perception that it is um, in good shape and the pickup of garbage and the pickup at the corners are very important part of that because everybody sees it. So I, I see it as a, as a part of COVID, which is part of the recovery, which is important. So we, we keep, we keep a, a clean and healthy environment. And especially because the, uh, especially because that's, well, yeah. I'll, I'll add, I'll yeah add, I, can I add I, one thing, Paul? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because I think what you're, you're looking at expense, right? Well, I saw, I noticed in both expense and capital, there were, uh, it seemed a miskewing of our priorities, but. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, in, I believe in capital elevators for all of the NYCHA buildings is one of the top priorities. Yeah, uh, which is the big ask, obviously. I mean, so sanitation very rarely has a capital priority. And so it's most of its most of the priorities that come from sanitation would be coming from expense. And so in that way, I think it also aligns with the fact that like if we want to make this something, you know, that does get that that can be resolved and that that could be resolved, you know, we want to give sanitation we want to give sanitation, you know, some space, some uh, some level of priority in where where we could put it. You know, we're, there's just nothing in capital really for sanitation. So that's why all of the NYCHA stuff is, you know, relatively high um, in capital. So I mean, I you know, I think if you want to talk about the balancing out of this the staffing request for for NYCHA elevator uh, repair people. Uh, then I think maybe we can look at that, but I don't know what the difference off the top of my head. I don't know the number difference between. But, but all right. So, but if I look at if I look at operating expenses, right? We have <laughs> basket collection as priority four, but we have providing students with access to enrichment and nourishment programs as number ten. We have um, expanding homelessness prevention programs below emptying the corner trash cans. 
And I think that preventing homelessness, feeding the students in the schools is more important to us than emptying the corner wastebaskets to make this, this community board, this community district appear less derelict. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, given that we're facing a budget cut, I think our priorities have to be more aligned um, with what we recognize will happen. So Jeffrey, it sounds like- Yeah, did, I just, maybe I'm looking at the wrong I, <clears throat> I'm sorry, Paul, I, can you just, I'm sorry, Jeffrey. Okay, Marie, go ahead. Paul, I was just gonna ask, which one are you looking at again, expense or? So if you look at expense- I just wanna follow, yeah, yeah, I might be on the wrong one. If you look at ex the uh, expense budget priorities, um, that li link that's in the Dropbox, they're prioritized. And the fourth highest priority coming out of this community board is provide more frequent litter basket collection. Mm -hmm. Whereas the sixth is expand homeless prevention programs. The tenth is providing students with access to enrichment and enrichment programming. Um, I, I, I just feel like sanitation, although it is a high priority from our community survey, um, I don't know that we as a board will want to put that higher up yeah. than feeding our kids in schools and preventing homelessness. Yeah, I'll let Jeffrey respond and then eventually it, I'll have something to say. Mine's twofold in the response. Um, the, the key behind it, the nuts and bolts is when it goes to agency, DHS will not see any of the um, sanitation reports. So those will be reprioritized accordingly based on agency. <clears throat> um, and I think that's really important because when we boiled it down, we had to put into buckets. If we have to pick one issue to address um, the homeless factor right now, it's item one is number one in the creation of more, um, uh, you know, affordable housing program through DHS. That step, and we had, or sorry, that's number three. Actually, I scrolled down. Um, well, it's one and three, both. It's one and three. Yeah. One yeah. And three. yeah. Um, so. That to me puts at the very top the priorities. We need a clean and safe district with access to more housing for New Yorkers. Um, and I recognize that it's difficult to put that before the feeding of kids or any education priority after that, but it's one of the most visible aspects of the city. And yet it's continuously the first thing on the chopping block. Um, Wait, was, I'm sorry, just to be rough. clear, guys, it's not feeding the kid. I, I think you're just reading that wrong. It's enrichment programs. It's an a, it's after school programs. I, did you mean like the you don't mean the feeding as, as in the lunch program, right? No, or the feeding whatever. The after you mean like program. a generic feeding, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, a, OK, yeah, I, that's me reading enrichment programs and just rephrasing it. So I apologize. OK, just, but just so you know, the, the Paul, those enrichment programs, there are some there already. It's really more of like, what are we going to do now that COVID hit and a lot of our after school programs kind of we can't do because of the gathering it's more of that type of thing like a virtual program can we put money in virtual programs but i do think as jeffrey and jessica were saying that we do have doe programs above the basket service and then we just kind of tempered it out does that make sense like if we had all doe up top and then all homeless but we do kind of parse it out or we did parse it out yeah, I think that's um, what Jeffrey was trying to explain. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I'm happy to say that as we continue, there is some additional feedback that Christine and others have provided. So this is um, not done. And oh. happy to take um, Paul your feedback. And as we continue to revise and refine to make sure that um, you know, that we're looking at it with this lens of making sure that these three priorities continue to get the kind of, uh, well, prioritization that, that I'm hearing. Um, I will say that ACES, uh, Leslie and Alan were very vocal on our budget um, committee to make sure that issues of education and our children were, our district children were included and, and this reflects a product of, of those discussions. Um, uh, Jill. Yeah. I have a question. How did the shelter, family shelter, get so high on the list? I find it very hard at this juncture, considering our difficulty with shelters, that we're going to prioritize that above affordable housing and NYCHA capital repairs. It really feels like it's we're going to solve the city problems first. I think it should be on our list, no question. But putting it ahead of affordable housing and NYCHA, 
does not seem consistent at all. What was the thinking behind that, Jessica? Sure. Well, if uh, I'm actually trying to look, locate my my original notes because this family shelter was part of another ask, which was connected to downsizing BRC, and they were one ask uh, together. And so there was a discussion um, uh, that actually Maria and Jesse uh, really contributed to about you know maybe downsizing BRC is less the focus right now, but that the yeah. second piece of that, the establishment of a family shelter which our district, as I'm told, doesn't have, would be important. And so it was sort of outside of the context of, um, of, the, shelter, of the ongoing conflict around the shelter population in our district, um, but rather that this is a need that has been noted and is longstanding. But I, I certainly should turn it to Maria and Jesse, uh, who- Oh, well, actually, and I talked to Maria about the link between DRC and this. And when that was the main issue, that made sense. But that's not where we are at this moment. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be very bad to constituents in the district that we are saying prioritizing another new shelter above permanent affordable housing or NYCHA capital improvements. It does not read as if we are listening to our community whatsoever. I and mean, so when well, you're well, oh, sorry. Well, no, I hear, Joe, I hear what you're saying. I was just going to say, but when we talk about the survey that was just done in the community, and there were, I think, like 300 people who responded to that, the first thing that's coming up is homelessness. And we don't even have one permanent family shelter in the district. Right, but we have a number of family shelter rooms that were vacated by the city, right, Maria? We have it, we have, we have, the, we have the travel in, we have the skyline. And I guess what I'm saying here is, it's not just a survey, it's us stepping back and realizing this is a public document for not just the 300 who right. responded to the survey, but the entire district. And given the horrible mismanagement we're dealing with, how does it appear that we say to NYCHA tenants, this is above your ask for elevators or the permanent, home, or permanent housing that we have? I just think we need to keep it on our, on our list, but in the environment we're in, we need to move it down. And, and so I was going to ask, it sounds like there are other comments, but before I get to Jeffrey and then Christine, I do just want to ask Joe specifically, like, would you, are you proposing a swap of a NYCHA request that's further down with this item or like, what I, would I, I just would move it. I would move it after anything where we have the, the NYCHA list and we know we keep them on just to keep them on and keep them going mm -hmm. move it below that simply because the huge number of people in NYCHA deserve, I believe, more consideration first because their capital needs are so outstanding. Right. Yeah. I, well, I think the challenge, and then uh, I, I guess the challenge just is that we are seeing, not just from the survey, but also discussions, the, the overwhelming issues related to homelessness in our district. We can move it down because maybe we should, but is there not another budget request we should be making? Um, and maybe it's not on the capital side, maybe it's on the expense side. It's really side. homelessness prevention, I think, that people are... What I, what I believe coming up, Jessica, is with the... As all the COVID stuff expires, we're going to have a lot more people having difficulty paying rent. Sure. And the homelessness prevention part is on the expense side, not the capital side. Because, by the way, getting a homeless shelter sited and figured and build it, building out is a long, long, much more long-term pro prospect and putting more money homeless prevention to make sure people don't get booted out yeah their families so i think we need to look and i'm making this note and then i still want to get to christine and jeffrey or whichever order that was originally but um but that we make sure that given that 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 request is sufficiently high that we can right. point to that on the expense side um i'm sorry i didn't remember i don't remember if i said jeffrey and then christine or christine and then jeffrey so you guys take it it's jeffrey first i i'm um completely opposite of joe um, we've never shied away from making an ask. If it's gonna take 10 years to get it done, we often keep it in our book for 10 years um, because we know that it's, it's worth the fight if it's something that we want. I think that given the fact that more and more people are not gonna be able to pay rent when COVID is over, um, makes me wanna double down on the fact that we need a family shelter in the district. So that way if folks actually end up going homeless in the district, <clears throat> might be a place for them in the district that they end up. Um, I don't think this also reduces the interest. Joe, Joe, I'm, Joe I'm, I've got the floor. 
Um, I don't think this reduces the interest of the NYCHA ask either. I think that a lot of NYCHA folks would agree wholeheartedly that homelessness is a major issue and it should be addressed by finding an appropriate family shelter in the district. I think that it's also different than the hotel situation we're dealing with right now, most of which is not um, family beds, if I'm not mistaken. All single, you're correct. So I, Joe, we are often always in lockstep on this stuff. And it was a struggle for me to actually have this creep up so high. And it wasn't just because of the survey. It was also because of all the work the community board actually has been doing, irrespective of this survey that the budget task force put out. Um, so I, I, you know, my thought is that it, we have a lot of single uh, hotels, etc. And I think if we could change that to say convert a, uh, a shelter to family, uh, a current shelter to family would be uh, maybe where we want to go because I understand what Joe is saying. We want to decrease the number. So why are we asking for more? And then uh, we want permanent housing, which is very important. But in between, if we could convert some of the uh, uh, single, you know, uh, adult into family housing, I think people want to see also that we are. Um, uh, we are creating a platform for uh, housing uh, people. Thank you, Christine. I see Dale and then Maria. Thanks. Thanks. Um, on this point, on this budget line item, um, I understand the interest, the current interest based on what's been going on is to deconcentrate the uh, services, not necessarily like net increase or de decrease in the district. So maybe this can be articulated in a way that it works towards that end and also has the family component. Yeah. Thank you, Maria. I second that. I'm just wondering if we were to move, let's say three down to right after the NYCHA asks regarding the elevator, I mean, something that we were talking about just a few minutes ago is that it doesn't really matter if it's, let's say, three versus five, because it goes to the agency in the order. Um, it go, and, and I'm looking at the top, like, six of them, and it's for different agencies. So I'm just curious, is it, does it make a significant difference if we have it at three versus at six? So, yeah. So a few more things. One is, Jeffrey, the family shelter system, you, you don't get to choose which shelter. You go to a central entry point and because people from our neighborhood, they have zero guarantee to come here. So, sure. so from the, so the outside point of view, looking in, we're increasing the number of beds. This was a specific ask in my recollection to decrease the single beds at BRC and say we prefer to have family beds. We've now decoupled it, so it's not so clear. And the second part is we were approached in the middle of all the temporary relocation by DHS to open a family shelter on 41st Street for women in need. And we told them go packing right now because no one would ever get it through. It's a mixed message. And I'm very concerned that the board understands all of our documents work in concert and we're putting out something. We just have to be very, very consistent. So think about that as we're proceeding ahead here on how to make it work. Because it doesn't work right now to put it so much toward the top. It's not just deconcentration. It's saying we have so many beds, blah, blah, blah. So you gotta think about it. Thank you, Joe. Is there any, uh, JD and then Bert? Yeah, just quickly, I thought Christine's suggestion was good on the face of it, but we need to be aware that the community is very concerned about these hotels becoming permanent shelters. Yeah. So we need to keep that in mind. Thanks. Can I can I jump in here for a second, Jessica? Yeah, please. Just because there's history here. The, the, the reason why these two requests were put together were because they were separate for a very long time. We, we lost a family, we lost a, sh a, a, a family shelter years ago. And ever since then, that had been a request. 
from you guys, from the community, to that you guys wanted a family shelter, you welcome the family shelter, and then what ha ended up separately happening was BRC, and the BRC issue being the number of beds and the impact on the community. And then I think two about two cycles ago, these two co these two requests combined. So they weren't never really initially together, but they were together for like the last two years. And so I just want to give that history there that this request for the, at least a, a family shelter has been something that's been on, on your guys' priority list pretty somewhat high up for, for a bit. Um, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Jesse. I think Bert and then Leslie. Yeah, I wanted to, Maria, respond to something that you had said because I was myself internally saying, what are we spending time arguing if something should be six or seven or 10 or 11, since it goes directly to the agencies, one agency doesn't see the other. But then I answered myself, and I think I have an answer for you, Maria, is that we know that, okay? But sometimes the document also has a life of its own, regardless of the agencies. Someone who doesn't know that background or actually what the process is, I was gonna say picks it up. No, so they go online and reads it and they say, oh, one, two, three. They only see the one, two, three, four. So we gotta remember that. There's a, a visual, there's an optical, and it's someone says, this is what community board four wants as number one. This is this is what they want for six, but look what they have down for 12. Isn't that we gotta remember that. Yeah. Sorry, I think, uh, hopefully, and then hopefully we can come to some resolution on a direction. I, I do agree. I agree with both Joe and then Christine and Dale. So I was wondering if um, what Joe says is right. If we're talking about de-densifying, 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 and then our number, whatever, one, two, or three is, let's add a shelter. It's, it is, um, I mean, it, it's a little odd for us. Uh, but what Dale said, I think, is is spot on. Why don't we just change the wording? And Because the skyline was a family shelter. And then what Jesse says, there was a family shelter. Isn't this an easy fix of just changing the word and saying, you know, replacing what this was back to a family shelter, and then it it kind of kills three birds with one stone? Or no, Joe, is that not even? What, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna actually go just a new one. That's the problem. So what about what, if I if I can? What about something that's again? We'll have to wordsmith it exactly. Whether it's. Um, uh, de-densifying or equalizing the concentration with a focus on accommodating families. Yeah. Right, but that would not be capital so much as expense. Because the, the shelters we've had have been really run through the expense budget, not the capital. In other words, um, the, you know, but, in the hotels, Maria, those are, are not from capital. Oh, okay, okay. I mean, I understand okay. like the goal here, but I don't think we quite the mechanism's not quite aligning because that's not where they came from. Our, our family beds were in a couple of hotels through DHS's expense budget, not a purpose-built, renovated structure. Mm. Purpose-built or renovated structure. But but even a de-densifying using existing shelters to accommodate families may require some capital improvements to make the facilities more appropriate. No? I think they no because because they're, they're leased, so they run it through expense. So even the creation, so would that mean that this ask should have never been in capital? No, this, this ask is for the purchase and or long-term lease and renovation of a building at a specific location. That's what this ask means to the okay. agencies. And but renovations it, to a shelter would go through capital. Why wouldn't renovations to a shelter? Yeah, yeah. no, but they, they won't renovate, they won't use capital funds for less than like a 20 or 30 year lease. It's a long-term thing. You can't use capital. Oh. Okay, I, I'm not sure where. Is the proposal, I mean, is, is, can I just throw out there then, is there one proposal to switch out? Can we just switch out, swap? Yeah. Swap the, 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 shel the, new, the new family shelter for the Six elevator, and the Six elevator, and, and yeah. that's, and that puts elevators higher, a night yeah, shelter the higher. higher, yeah. And then no puts, puts a shelter in that, in that place? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Then we have the commitment to the the NYCHA folks first you know it doesn't mean we take it off but it also means 
So the only thing you have to be aware of, and the reason I'm pushing is going to come to my committee. Uh, DHS already has approached the board. When was that, Jesse? August? Yeah. yeah. About acquiring and buying or leasing a long term on 41st Street. You have to be very careful. This is not the opening for that to happen without thinking broadly. That's all. Okay. Okay. So we will. Alan, Alan has something to say. I would go with the um, perception is sometimes everything um, uh, argument, and I think uh, it goes both ways. If the individual agencies just see for the individual agencies, we need to be uh, a little bit more sensitive to what uh, the community just you know, present presented as such. And I would include in that in that text the uh, changing, like Leslie was saying, changing the the text to say D isn't you know. Identifying the single bed. These and uh, right. you know, convert to uh, not convert, but create Replace. Replace. family. Right. Well, can I propose that we move six up to three and establishing yeah, yeah. the new shelter as number four? Above the school request? No. Above the school request? No. He wants to put it behind night shy elevators. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I just suggested. Oh, did you do that? Did you? Move I, she she did by moving by moving six to three, but not moving the other. One. Got it. A lot easier just to do a clean swap than shift everything down. Yeah, I do a clean swap. <laughs> All right, a clean clean swap. You're just opening another can of worms. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Okay, <laughs> Paul. Yeah, given the conversation that you know, Bert just pointed out in terms of this document and what people might see again, I'd. Re repeat my concern that waste basket cleansing is a higher priority on our budget list than NYCHA elevators. And I'd like to see a way we can move some of those things around. Mm -hmm. I understand that it goes to agencies and it's different, but I think Bert's point is valid here. The waste basket on the- uh, Paul, uh, on the survey basket was overwhelming, overwhelming on, on right. what, and I think it, it I think the basket service, Paul, this is just what I hear, just being on the street cleanups and stuff. Um, it also goes to health. It also goes to hygiene. It also goes to um, just how people feel, how tw visitors feel. Um, yeah. I, I think that's a very, very big deal um, when it comes to, and I understand what you're saying. You're like basket service. like Yeah, like imagine being, imagine being a NYCHA resident and you pick up this document, as Bert says, and you see that the board has voted to empty the waste cans on the corner is a higher priority than fixing the elevators in their buildings. But that's in the expense side, Paul, not the capital side. And yeah, no, I know. I'm, I'm, We're I'm, on the expense now. He's discussing the expense. Oh, I'm sorry. Huh. Yeah. Well, okay. in, the ex in the expense budget, I mean, both the basket pickup and the elevators and the expense are staffing issues. What it really comes down to are mm -hmm. staffing issues. Mm -hmm. How many sanitation workers do we have? How many routes do they have? Okay, how often? And the same thing with the elevators. With the elevators, we're talking about there are over 40 unfilled positions of elevator repair, elevator mechanic repair helpers. The, that's an important position now. Um, and then we probably also want more. In addition to the budgeted positions that are unfilled, we want more positions. Is, so me, is it possible? I don't, have, I don't have the document in front of me, but there are a number of sanitation issues. Is it possible we can consolidate? Because we also talk about residential pickups. Um, yeah, I'm way lower than that. Oh, that's really down at the bottom. Right, right, right. But, uh, you know, Paul, where would you put the baskets? What well, I would even it just if we want to make it simple for swapping, swap four and eleven on the expense categories. But I mean, the the staff for NYCHA elevators is number eleven. Eleven. Yeah. And the basket collection is number four. And okay. so even if you just swap them for the sake of the the the, the image of it, as Bert points out, you know, we know the the. So if you want to make it easy to just swap, swap four and 11. That would be my recommendation. And, and Leslie, I see you shaking your head because I, I know it came up as a community 
No, no, no. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. I'm just I saying. I want to flag that it, this wasn't just informed by the community survey. I, it's really important to note that this also came out of committee prioritization. Um, it was actually 100% committee prioritization that put it there because we were trying to make sure that we weren't just sort of knee jerk reaction to the survey um, and sort of taking the wider view as it's work that's been done, it's asks that have been made. So. Well, and also, Paul, if we you, flip it, then it's going to be weird that basket service is going to be behind open streets. It's, it'll be, I think, a yeah. little odd that basket service is yeah. behind yeah. pedestrian safety. Not that those aren't important, Christine. I, like, I understand. No, no, I agree. Uh, what cool. about moving 11 in front of the basket? That's what I was going to suggest, Christine. Yes. 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 I also am more comfortable with that than just move it in front of the flip, everything right? goes and down. Everything else just moves right. down and, right. just, and then just remembering. Okay, I'm fine with them. Right. Yeah. Right. Paul, I think Jeffrey, that's are you okay with that? Uh, that makes sense to me. Yes. Right. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We just, you know, well, we have to talk about it. We have to talk about it first <laughs> to get there. <laughs> it's a sausage. Okay. So Jessica, you are missing a bunch of things that I sent and that you acknowledge that, right? Yep, I acknowledge that. Um, I think we wanted to make sure we got everybody's feedback yeah. and that they this was you know part of that. And we'll go back through and make those changes and uh, we'll uh, be sure to be in communication with the budget task force about that. Um, okay. So everyone who is on the budget task force and part of this group and you have not provided your edits to the statement of district needs, we must have those no later than Wednesday at noon. So that is your hard deadline um, so please get that. But Jesse, do we need a vote on this? Yes, you do. Okay, so do we have a motion? Motion to approve as amended budget uh, fiscal 21 asks. Second. 22. 22 asks. 22. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all those all in favor? favor? Yeah. Great. Uh, Viren, Mike Noble, how'd you vote? Viren and Mike, since you're neither Viren, of you. Do, do, I, do I vote? No, yeah. no, Viren does not. No, no, you're not a committee. Oh, actually, sorry. Yeah, okay. Mm. So, Mike, you still have to vote, though. <clears throat> Mike, Mike, you're on mute. All right, we'll take that in as an abstention for now. It still passes. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you. All right, next up, we have a letter from transportation that has some urgency to it. So it's been asked that exec um, passed it and then it go through the full board just for ratification. This is about West 30th Street and Christine and Dale. Yeah, West 30th Street, as you know, has been is this very bizarre street which has multiple streets on it, Dyer Avenue and 30th Street between nine and 10. And uh, it has been occupied, at least two lanes have been occupied by the uh, work for DDC, uh, DDC and DEP for the water main. Uh, uh, the eastern section of it is going to be freed up next month. And uh, DDC wanted to resurface as traffic lane. And we have had discussion with, uh, I mean, the uh, bid has had discussion with, uh, DOT and DDC and DEP and there was a proposal made for taking those two lanes of traffic and greening them, uh, you know, putting planters, etc., to make this whole area a little nicer than it is today. Those two lanes of traffic are not needed for the last five years. We have functioned very well without them. And we think it's a good opportunity, except that they are going to do that in four weeks. So the bid needs to really um, activate the DOT. And the DOT said they needed a resolution from uh, CB4. So I recommend that we adopt it for, um, uh, you know, greening a portion of that section. Bert, did you have a question? And then Betty. Yeah, I do have a question. So I'm trying to visualize this. From Dyer to Ninth, There'll be two lanes of green. Yes, the two lanes in the but, middle. Okay, but what about 10th to Dyer? It's still occupied by DDC. So the construction, okay. 
Yeah, so the construction is still there, and we think it's going to go away in one year. I mean, you know, and at that time, we will fight that, get that done. Would it be, uh, be possible in the letter to say, and we would like the same thing on the other end of the street when that's available? And someone, someone has to, either they're using the phone or yeah, I don't they've got their speaker really loud, so it's reverbing. Huge uh, echo. Yeah. Uh, echoes. We could do that, although we have been trying to be very uh, tactical and not you know, Joe, I think I'm going to put, put you on mute. Did that fix it? Yes. Okay. So we've been very tactical and say, you know, not grand scheme, etc. to say, okay, there is an opportunity, we take this one. And um, we could, I, I don't know whether it helps or not. That's what I'm saying. Okay. I'll leave it up to you. Right. I think it's for that moment. Maybe. Yeah. For the moment, because of the urgency, I think it's better not to raise right. that. I agree with you in principle, but I think it's better not to raise it. Yeah, we all agree, but Betty, you are on mute. Yeah, j just a couple of things. Um, one is in line 25, I think you want to say, take away, delete the A and just say, bus parking is located, blah, blah. And speaking of bus parking, um, does the bus parking remain? Yes. Yes, okay. And just to clarify, because uh, we use that 30th Street a lot, um, what will, I love greening, you know I love that. Um, there will be two lanes for moving traffic and two, lanes that have become green. And is that about right? Yes. Okay. Because there's, there's, there is a lot of traffic on, I think, I can't remember if it's two or three lanes existing now. No, there's only two okay. lanes existing. Two, two lanes now? Yeah. 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 Um, so, so there's no- A very large space. Yeah, okay. No, I look forward to the green. Thank you very much. Whoops, any other questions about this letter? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. A second? Bird seconds it. All those in favor of the letter? Aye. Thank you. Anyone opposed? No, all right. So that passes. We move on to the next letter. There is a letter from the Social and Racial Justice Task Force about a proposal from CB10. Um, I'm gonna turn this over to Viren for a discussion because this is a task force. It has to be voted on by exec before it goes to full board. Viren. Yeah, hi guys. Um, CB10 came over and sort of presented to us uh, their proposal for, or the, the request rather, for um, a support letter from CB4 in regards to the monument for which they don't have any exact plans or proposals, but a desire to have um, a permanent exhibit in the northeast corner side of Central Park. Um, and they have been asked by uh, borough president's office to actually go to different community boards and uh, kind of um, garner support. So they came and they made a comprehensive um, presentation to all of us and the, the, the task force members pretty much sort of uh, were quite all, um, you know, blown away with um, the comprehensive nature of their work because we didn't realize that they've been, they've been doing this since December last year. And Dale actually did have a listing for this letter. So I'm gonna actually um, pass it on to him to sort of say a little more about it. Sure. Um... I, I was, I, you know, I was very impressed with the presentation. I recognize that this is a, a, a proposal for uh, an area not, you know, in, in Central Park, but not near our district. Um, but um, we are a park, <laughs> trying to make the case that we are a park adjacent district, such as it is one little, one little corner. 
and also that the um, issue of unequal uh, prosecution and law in law enforcement, unequal treatment in law enforcement has impacted our district very recently. And so that it's a it's an issue that continues that that is that is of interest to members of our community and would overall because it would be an enhancement to Central Park would be a benefit to our community. So if there are any questions, I'm happy to take them. JD. Yes, you're on mute, JD. Give me. I fully support the, the first paragraph uh, supporting uh, this terrible, uh, terrible injustice uh, done to these young men. I fully support that. Although as the letter says, we- Hard to hear you, JD. Uh, although as the letter says, we generally don't get into that, but I fully support the first paragraph. The second paragraph is a little troubling to me for two reasons. There is the implication that the uh, attempted arrest of Mr. Ingram was racially motivated. Uh, I, I, I don't think we should, I mean, that's not proven. I, I, I'm a little hesitant for us to say that it was. And secondly, comparing the attempted arrest um, to what happened to those young men uh, is just not appropriate. It, it is not on the same magnitude. So I would either revise that second paragraph or eliminate it altogether, but I fully support uh, supporting board 10 uh, in the first paragraph. Jiddy, you mean the third paragraph, right? Sorry, just one second. I'm just trying to clarify. Jiddy, you mean the third paragraph, right? No. I, uh, uh, Viren, I, I may, I'm sorry. I don't have it right before me. It's okay. It's okay. I think it's the third paragraph. Yeah. Thanks. Just before Dale uh, speaks, I just want to quickly say that one of the reasons we felt um, that it was necessary to sort of include um, uh, something about that event for two reasons. One, it is current, current, and the second one was that it wasn't very clear if the manner in which this arrest was attempted was properly done. So, you know, the, the, the issue that we, what we're trying to draw attention to is the fact that justice is, is uneven and um, the excessive nature of um, that operation is what we're trying to draw attention to. And that's what we sort of- Aaron, I, I don't disagree, but I, I think the excessive and inappropriate force that was used was a result of a, it was stupid, yeah. but I, it wasn't, it was an escalation from one thing after another. If it had been a person, an, a, a white person, it might've been the same stupidity. I don't know. But we are assuming that it was racially motivated and uh, it was from the get-go. And that's that's what I'm questioning, whether or not we should be stating those unprovable uh, facts. All right, I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to Dale as the author of the letter, then Joe, then Maria. Oh, and by the way, just uh, there was something I neglected to mention, which is in the letter. Uh, I uh, Tamara McCaw, McCaw who's, who's one of the chief curators of the Shed, attended our meeting and expressed an interest to me uh, in a side conversation about reaching out to the organizers. And but with the, so I mentioned her in the letter, but with that said, I'm waiting to speak to her for confirmation on that. I don't want to speak for her in this letter, but that that section I think is pending our discussion. Um, on the point of Derek Ingram, I while I would agree that there is no uh, concrete evidence that the police response was predicated on the gentleman's race, I think we can look to examples in the district and throughout the city and in, in a wider way and look for anything remotely like what happened to him happening to a white protester. And I would I would, I would uh, posit that it has not happened in that manner, that the police may have been riled up because one of their own was injured by a, a megaphone at a protest, but they took the occasion to respond in that unequal way 
because there is a mindset to see black people as perpetrators. And that is not something that I'm gonna deliver a, a set of receipts on with proof, but it seems pretty self-evident in the country I was raised in. All right, Joe? Yeah, so I'm not gonna be on a high horse at all here. I believe it was racially motivated and it was bullshit what they did to Derek Ingram. But it has nothing whatsoever to do with this letter. Another board came to us for support. We are not about solving all, I'm sorry, this, this task force, I don't think your charge is solving all social injustice. They came, they talked, we are conflating two things. As a board, we have litigated this discussion about what happened on 45th Street, and I really take exception to your opening it up again to be discussed again. It really is troublesome that I, we're gonna go through this again. We okay. said this, okay. we all right, all right, all right, hang on, Maria. Marie, you're on mute. You yeah, go. thank you. Um, so just two things that I was thinking. I think that JD made a comment about it, that there's no proof that it was racially motivated what happened to Derek Ingram. But I think um, it, in both situations with the exonerated five and Derek Ingram, we can surmise that it had to do with race. And I think, the, yeah. the, you know, but I, I read the letter and seeing that the, the second entire paragraph about, about Derek Ingram, it just made me wonder if that paragraph is there to bring it back to, to how it, it, you know, to our community. But in my mind, reading the letter, I thought it would be more appropriate to have that paragraph be about the exonerated five. And I think the two situations are extraordinarily different where, you know, Ingram was, you know, arrested in a way that was absolutely excessive or, you know, attempted to be arrested in a way that was absolutely excessive, but the exonerated five were accused of raping and beating a woman and leaving her for dead. So I just, I wondered if the second paragraph, does it make sense and could we have that be about that situation? Leslie? I actually agree with both Maria and Joe, um, just going through that whole sentence. Park Five when I was young. We can't equate what happened to Derek. And I, I agree with Dale. Both I agree with the paragraph separately, if that makes sense. Hmm. Um, I just don't know if we if this is a letter to support CB10 and to support this um, statue. I think that's very important to lend our support, and I think you guys did that very appropriately and and well done. I just don't know bringing Derek Ingram back into it. I think actually dilutes that. Um, it, it dilutes that what happened. To, to the Central Park boys, and you're equating that with uh, a botched, a botched. It's the attempt. exonerated five. The exonerated uh, yeah, five. The exonerated five. Um, by the way, it's unbelievable documentary. But um, I just, I, I just think those two, the two paragraphs. I don't know if if it belongs in the same letter. Though I agree with both separately. Okay, I'm gonna. Is there anyone else have a, a aside from an author of the letter, Dale? I'll come back to you in a minute. Anyone else, Jeffrey? Um, maybe it's not the right letter to put it in, even though <clears throat> I'm really pleased by the fact that this will have public statues of uh, men who are not white going into our, our public spaces. And there's no recognition of that here. And, and I guess I just, I'm a big fan of more public um, it's not statues for people who aren't just white dudes. It's not necessarily mm -hmm. a statue though. Yeah, they, 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 All right, all right, wait a buddy second. Alan was next. Okay. That's it's, fine. I just want Alan. to clarify, it's not necessarily a monument to the Exonerated Five. It's more conceived, at least at this phase, as a um, an educational exhibit. So it doesn't have a monumental scope. Okay, thank you. Alan, sorry. Alan. Okay, I'm um, sorry, Jeffrey, were you done? All right, Alan was next, then Marty. Viren and, and Viren and Dale, you, you're the authors, you get the last word here, don't worry about it. So I, I would agree with the point that Leslie brings up about the watering down. Um, I think uh, the support, the, uh, obviously CB10 came to us for support for their letter. Um, I wasn't at the meetings, I don't know, did they bring up the subject of, Ing of, of the gentleman, of Mr. Ingram? And I think, and I think, it, I think it takes away. It's like we're pushing our agenda or, or our thoughts or our feelings about what happened in our community when they're coming to us for support what happened in their community. And I think it, it's two separate issues. 
and I think if we can deal with that, that whole issue of Mr. Ingram in, in, some, in some form, maybe we can do that. But I think it should be separate. We should support them and, and, and you know, deal, deal with Mr. Ingram's situation. Uh, raised hand too low, by the way. All right, I'll get you, Mike. Marty. Sorry, Alan, I'm gonna say exactly the opposite. I, I support um, uh, putting in uh, stuff about the exonerated five, that makes sense, that supports whatever the display is. But I also support bringing it back to our community. You could make it shorter, but uh, I think talking about Mr. Ingram in this letter is so appropriate because it makes a connection to what happened in Central Park and it brings it to our community. All right, Mike Noble. Well, I'm just the opposite of you, Marty, on this. I agree with the other uh, speakers, Joe and Leslie uh, and Maria, to an extent. Hey, Jancy. Uh, we're stealing the thunder of uh, Community Board 10. They want our support. We don't need to uh, add our own misery uh, to their letter, okay? Okay, here's what I want to do. I, this is not a binding vote, all right? I just want to get a, a straw vote. How many people would support the letter without the paragraph about Mr. Ingram? Can I get aye. you to show of hands? Aye, aye, aye. All right, I got you, Mike. All right. How many people want the letter with the paragraph about Derek Ingram? Okay. With that, you know, Straw vote in front of you, Dale and Virian. Will you accept this as a friendly amendment to strike that paragraph? Um, I can I speak? Speak. Sure, go ahead. And then Virian after Virian after that. Marie, I'll come back to you. Um, I am perfectly willing to modify the paragraph. I do think that it would be helpful to have some, you know, uh, summary summarizing context about the story of the exonerating five without retreading the entire history. However, I do believe that this is, as a board, we are seeking to identify with and relate to what the work that the our, our neighbors in CB10 are doing. I also find it a little troubling that this board is seems very motivated to bury the story of Derek Ingram. I find that I find that very troubling, and I would I would ask that you examine that motive, because mm -hmm. it did happen. It is relatable to what happened to the exonerated five. There is a through line. It is not it is not a high concept through line. It's pretty self evident, and and uh, those are my comments on this exchange. All right, Viren. Okay, um, very quickly. I think um, a few things. Right, this letter is actually. Uh, there's, there's multiple contributions to the letter. And um, members of the task force, the majority of the members felt that reference to Mr. Ingram should be made to sort of draw a connection between the system, systemic um, injustice that sort of um, remains. So that was the main sort of draw of why we should mention this. But at the same time, I told, I also agree personally. Now, this is a, not as a chair or not not, not as a co-chair, but personally, I do agree that it's uh, this letter is more about um, you know supporting CB 10s request for an exhibit, an edu with, along with some educational programs, um, and not so much about Derek Ingram. But I also, in principle, agree, but some reference should be retained in the letter. So here is what I'm going to propose. The modification I'm proposing is the very first line of the paragraph three. If that is acceptable, uh, if, you, if you like, I can actually paste it in chat. I got, I don't know, I can't do it. I, I just, the only I, I just I sent it by chat. I only have the PDF open and it's not gonna copy that very easily. For instance, a very large paragraph, we at least draw the fact in as to why we feel the need to support this letter beyond the sort of, you know, much bigger sort of uh, picture that everybody in this room agrees with. Well, there is language that you can use that everyone will recognize 
uh, when we say we have had our own experience recently, mm-hmm. okay, and therefore um, are sympathetic with, uh, you know, your proposal. We needn't go into all the details of it because I don't want to dilute uh, the uh, value of all the effort that CB10 has put into this, okay? They spent enormous amount of time. Yes. Right? They've got a lot of, you know, coverage on it as well. Yeah. Uh, we make reference and everybody's going to know what it's about. Okay, yeah. Maria, then Joe, then Bert. And then I want to wrap this up. Yeah, I was just simply going to suggest um, that we have one or two sentences about Ingram. I understand the reasoning for it, but just not a, a full paragraph going into all the details. I just think their situations are, you know, extraordinarily different. Very different. So. Yep. Okay, thank you, Maria. Joe? I mean, taking the straw vote, I really say I, I support an amendment. I put forth an amendment to delete the paragraph with the letter because the trouble, troubling part I have here is we are definitely in a lecture mode and I am not comfortable in being in these meetings, constantly being lectured at. I, okay. From a process point of view, I propose we delete the paragraph. Okay, well, well I, 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 all right. But Bert? Yeah, I want to say that we have a relationship to CB10 other than the geographic we abut Central Park. Yes, I do. And I think that we need a paragraph here saying about and I, the systemic racialism, racial inequality, something like that is in CB4. And it's not just from 30 years ago, it's today, and we, we, we feel it and have, have the effects of it in our community board as well. Okay, so here's one what we're gonna reasons, do. Here. One of the reasons this, this uh, right now, it's only gonna be an exhibit, but it's not just an exhibit for CB10, it's an exhibit for all of Manhattan, for all of the city, and we right. should have some kind of secondary paragraph. In Thank it. you, Bert. All right, so there are two proposals on the table. There is the proposal to include just the long sentence that Viren has pasted into the chat. And there is a proposal to do without that sentence entirely. Okay, I'm not sure the fastest way to do this. I think I'm just gonna do a quick roll call, say with or without, or, or I can do it, I can, I can do it by just a straw vote. You're voting with the paragraph or voting without the paragraph. I assume we, it sounds like we want this letter in some form, so we can do that afterwards. But let's just do it with the letter or without the letter. Uh, Viren, as the chair of the Social Justice and sure. racial, Social and Racial Justice Task Force, are you okay with that proposal? Yes. Okay. So let's do it. Let's do a vote. This is a formal vote. We're voting either with the with the par- with the sentence or without the sentence. All those in favor of the letter, you're doing with the sentence. Okay, you're doing it two. Okay, you're doing two votes then. I'm doing two votes. I'm going to vote yeah. yeah. But um, for the first vote is with or without. It's like you're voting on a cheesesteak. All right, all those in favor of the letter with the paragraph, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is the paragraph we have in the chat. Yes, the paragraph we oh, have. Oh, and me too. Yeah. I thought right. you were. Hands up again because Maria's screwing me up here. I am. I apologize. Wait, One, well, I'm sorry. Just so we're clear, the paragraph in the draft letter is out. And we're all, yes, the paragraph in the draft letter is out. We are only talking about the paragraph, the, the one sentence, the first sentence of that paragraph, which is pasted in the chat. Okay, so hands up if you're in favor of with. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's, it's. And Mike Noble. Mike, Mike, you're voting without? I'm voting without because the paragraph. Okay, I don't need an explanation long, right now. Too long. AD. No, no, I don't need an explanation. I'm just All taking right. the vote. No. And JD, you're saying without as well? I'm saying I would agree if the first part of that could be tweaked a little yeah. to make it, uh, not to make it a statement of fact, but a, 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 a concern that we have that it's something like that, I would then be okay with it. Viren, are you okay with JD's change? So it is, let me understand. So the, the paragraph that I've, I did, this one line that I've put in the chat, 
he wants to where we say we've also seen that systemic racial inequities remain. Can we say something like we're also concerned that uh, these uh, racial, uh, systemic racial things, we're concerned it about changed, it. It changed the word just stating it directly. I'd I would, be okay with it. I would, I would agree to that. Um, I wouldn't use the word concerned in that area, but or appear to. It's something along okay. those lines. Okay. Now, we need a formal vote on the final uh, letter. Not locked down in stone proven beyond a reasonable doubt, it'll, we'll say, appear to. Okay. All right, so let me make this clear. We are now voting on the letter with just that, the one paragraph, the one line in the chat with the word seen in the third line replaced to be something a little bit softer. All those in favor of that letter, raise your hand. Aye. All right, that's unanimous. Thank you all. Bravo, everybody. Nice okay. job. We do here. good work. Okay. Um, because we still have an agenda left, I'd like to get us out of here in the next 12 minutes. Um, please check the draft agenda and the committee schedule. If you have any questions about your committee schedule, please email Jesse, Janine, or Nellie, whoever your committee person is, and, and make sure you get that updated for your November committee. Chair reports, small meetings. Um, we continue to meet with, about, with, with DHS, with our, some of our electeds, about 36th Street and about the Skyline Hotel on 49th Street. Hopefully we'll make some progress on that. Alan attended a meeting organized by the speaker in EDC about the number of helicopter complaints. And Nellie and I met with the new CEOs of both the 10th and Midtown North in the last month. Um, in terms of the, I think that's it for the chair report, the district office report. Jesse, I'm stealing your thunder on this one. Is that okay? Yeah. I am happy. I have other things. I have other things to report, though. That's I know, but I'm stealing. You know which one I'm stealing. I know. I know. Go ahead. I am happy to report that in our possession is a signed license agreement between Brookfield Properties in the City of New York for the, the Suite 580 at 424 West 33rd Street. We have an office. <laughs> Congratulations! This is the smaller of the two, right? It's the small no, let's, not two, start, Brookfield. let's not talk about size, all right? Let's just be <laughs> happy that it exists. Brookfield, Brookfield, still wants to give us, Brookfield still wants to give us the, the place across the hall that will give us a conference room and make us look like a real board, but we are at least no longer homeless. So we've we solved the we homeless have. problem in the, in the district. CB4 is no longer homeless. What Jesse, you the me? rest of the district uh -oh. managers report. We, we just to clarify, we do have a conference room, okay? <laughs> it's a little small. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit smaller, but we have a conference room, right? It's good public, close to public transportation. It's an, it's a renovated building, you know? Um, uh, there will be- It is on hold because we have to use it virtually. And there is a plaza. Yeah, there's a plaza. Yeah, and, and there is a freeze. Uh, <laughs> and there is a food, world food. Bollards, whoever loves bollards. Bollards, right? Bollards. It's um, 480, right? Not 580, 480? Sweet 580 at four. What's the address, Jesse? Oh, four, four, 424. Uh, it's 424 yeah. West 33rd. It's the loft building behind one Manhattan plaza. It's directly opposite the uh, the exit from the Lincoln Tunnel. To be clear, though, we are not set up, so don't stop by. Yeah, don't don't don't, don't stop by. We, we will have an opening party yeah. when we are allowed to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so real quick, have a signed um, license agreement. That was pretty much all I had to say, but I just want to go over November committee schedule real quickly. The only real. Um, change in the schedule is for Clinton Health Kitchen land use because it falls on Veterans Day. So we're having to push that back uh, later in the month. Everything else meets at its normal time and um, uh, and we're still going. And uh, and Joe, yes. Request from Chelsea Knight, your working group to do a community forum or something. I just got that this after, during this meeting. I'll follow up with you uh, tomorrow, okay? Okay, meaning like, like is this, in person or is this virtual? Oh, no, no, a virtual thing. Okay, okay. All righty. Um, and then um, as some of the folks on this board, on this committee know, uh, so we did finally, DHS has confirmed a, a date and a time we're meeting tomorrow to start their monthly uh, district level 
uh, meetings with all of the providers that uh, they've that have are, are new providers in our district to talk to do have a hold the monthly operational sort of district service cabinet type of meeting with all the providers and go through what's going on and what's working what's not who needs help that kind of stuff and so that's been a long time ask of me and this office and from Joe and Maria's letters and from Gail's letters and so that's kicking off tomorrow and so um, I'm happy about that. Um, and then uh, I think th that's it. All right. Um, I want to recognize that there has been a member of the public listening to all of this. Um, I'm going to make a mess of the individual's name, but um, I want to do it, wanted to acknowledge them. Um, Jesse, can you turn that person on and see if they want to say anything? I can. Because I'm going to make a mess of your name. Sir, you still with us? Um, are you talking about me? Yes, you talking about you. Ah, sorry. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Uh, you? Did, did you have a specific concern you wanted to raise to the community board or are you were just visiting? Um, I'm kind of just visiting. Um, I, I kind of missed it, obviously, because you guys started at 630, but I, I wanted to join. Well, thank, thank you for being with Wait, us. Wait, can you also say your name? Oh, it's Hugh Gorthin. Gorthin. Hugh Gorthin. Hugh Gorthin, not oh, you. Of that. I'm sorry. I mean, no, no, it's totally fine. Okay, well, thank you for like joining a us. On or something. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us. Does anyone else have any new or old business to raise? Uh, point just on the agenda factor. Um, do we just have to, Jesse, if we have something to go on? Hudson River Park may have something for us. Yeah, just uh, just coordinate with Janine. I think I think we've gotten we were we were we were so busy that I think um, this month and everything that we we don't have necessarily uh, everything up and ready for the committee schedule. So if you see if you're looking at that and you're saying I already spoke to Janine or Nelly or me um, and it's not up there yet, that doesn't mean anything's wrong. It just maybe didn't get up there yet. But um, yeah, but I would just follow up with your whoever manages that committee. All right, Dale. Um, I just had a question about the uh, task force recommendations. Is there a time, the board specific ones, is there a timeline for implementing them? Not at the moment. We're still, you know, we, 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 they were approved, but the implementation is, is a discussion we still need to have. Oh, is that a discussion for exec at some point? Um, it probably will be, but we're not there yet. Okay. Bert and then Leslie. Yeah, Hudson River Park reminded me, since you're now District 4's represented to the board, the trust, the trust yes. is that like a, a position where you will report back to us and tell us you had a meeting with them and this is what happened? Or is that something sort of separate from your board position? It is separate from my board position. The way the Hudson River Park Act is written, there has to be a representative approved in consultation with CB4. I am happy to report in, and I can tell you just from a factual basis, just about everything the board is working on that will affect our district is still going to go through Jeffrey and Marty's committee. It just gives us an extra voice with the trust. Have you met yet? Have you? I, I, I sat in on the, the board meeting at the beginning of October. I would also note that um, CB4 for a long time was not really well represented from a from a personal perspective. Um, there's always been like a really local resident for CB2 and CB1 on the trust board. And now, um, I'll be frank, it used to be Douglas Durst. He's a resident of 43rd Street, but his interest is not necessarily our interest. So it's really nice that we have a if I may, my good friend Lowell, a lay person among those on uh, the trust board for our interest. So it's a nice change for CB4, actually. And before, before Douglas was appointed, that seat was empty for empty. a long time. It mm -hmm. was empty for a very, very right, long Les time. Leslie. I said a question. I wrote it in the chat. You, no one's ever heard back from the Derek Ingram. This might be for Dale or Vera and maybe Jesse. Anything on our original Derek Ingram letter or from any of the people that we sent it to, any of the agencies, any movement or anything? Uh, no, we know, it was, we know it was received. Um, we didn't hear back from the electeds, at least that we, they sent the, the request for uh, um, oversight hearing was received. We can, we, we can definitely follow up. Thanks, Jess. All right, 
Anyone else? I'll take a motion to adjourn. Anyone second? So moved. Hi, everyone. Uh, Thanks for coming. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Good night.